Yeah, hey, I got uh, somebody calling in. Norma, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. Well, hello, Miss Norma. It's Wednesday. Uh, where have you been? Where are, you should say, where are you? I'm in Nassau, Bahamas. Bahamas? I didn't know you were going this week. I know. My mom got sick, so I had to... My mom, she's in the hospital, so I had to take a short trip, but I tell you, it's beautiful over here, and uh, she's doing better. God, work a miracle. She, I just have a story to tell because the doctor called all the family in because we thought we was going to lose her. She's 81, and what happened is, you know, it's a lot of complications, and I went over there with some prayer oil, and I said, you know what, my mom, she deserves to live longer, and I tell you, she was already cold, I'm telling you, and she was half gone. The monitor showed her heartbeat had already went to a certain level, and the doctors we called, the pastor, the sisters, my sisters came in from that island, and I told, I mean, it's a miracle. She's alive now, and it was like, you know, Christ just a miracle. I think it's you just know? because Miss Norma came to visit her, and... and uh... But I came, see... When they called me, when they called me, I had to gather this money, and I'm like, no way, no way. I'm not going down there just to see her. I'm going down there to pray and lay hands on her and, and, and claim healing in the name of Jesus. And I'm telling you, even the pastors and everyone say, you look at, they told me, they said, you read the monitor. You can't go by what you say. I said, no, this going to be a miracle. It's going to be a miracle. She revived, start talking. I mean, they really done call the under, you know, it was, I'm telling you, the, <laughs> it's, it's strange because God worked in mysterious ways, because my old thing, when I first went down there, she was sort of okay, and three, four days after I was down there, they called us in. So my sister from Houston, my sister from the other part of the island, and we prayed, we prayed, and, 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 and what I'm trying to tell people out there, because so I normally go anywhere where I have to go. I had some prayer oil from, um, um, what's his name? I got it through the mail. He said it came from the Holy Land. Um, Lord Parsley. And, and and I took that oil and I was rubbing my mom on. But the part about so it's, it's, it's like a, a an, like the the doctors and the nurses. So that's like you know? anointing oil. Yes, it's a special little bottle of anointing, special oil. See, when I went down there, I saw her the first couple of days, and she was doing. But it was that it was Thursday when they called the no, it was when was this two days ago they called all the family in. And the part about it was, you know, she done that. She was already, you know, sort of cold, wasn't responding. But the monitor, you know, the heart monitor and all the stuff, it was showed us a beep, beep, and go slow, slow. We saw all of that. And, and the pastor and the, my, you know, the bishops and everyone, we did done, I mean, I was done crying. And, we, and then we sang song. And we did, I mean, she just revived, started talking. She said she changed her mind after about 10, 12 hours we were there in the hospital, and she's still in the hospital. But I just want Cleveland, who oh, are oh, listening, to know we need to trust God. No matter we are family members, no matter what age, we are not to give up on people, and we are not to listen to the doctor's last report. Because when I went down there, I went down there in the name of Jesus, saying that she will be healed. And, and, and the doctors, the nurses, and our family members, the whole group of us, they saw the miracle. We had, we, we had proof, you know? That she was just right. reading on the oxygen. She's not ready to go. No, it wasn't the time. I think it was for other people to see the glory of the God and to see miracles. Because what happened, I had a few people around that to follow the room. They tell me, what, what, say, read the monitor. You look at what the monitor said. I said, I want no monitor. I want what God is saying. This is my mom. And I came here with a purpose. And even if she lived another five um, years or another five days, the fact is, they did not say, you know, that only a couple more, any time now, she'll go. So I just want to give God this praise and glory because I was trying to get through. Uh, I'm, I'm coming in tonight sometime. I'll be there because I didn't do, I, God done work through me. That's what I'm trying to see. He didn't do the purpose, what he sent me down there for, to show the Bahamas and those down there, the witness. So they all have a testimony now to tell of the goodness and miracles, no matter what age, 8 or 81. You know, God still work miracles. So I give God the praise, and I'll see you on next Wednesday, Cleveland. Give God the glory. Okay, for daddy. All right, yes. Miss Norma, we'll see you right. next week. You take care, and I'm yes. glad your mom is okay. Yes, praise the Lord. A man, a woman, and a child. Well, that was Miss Norma calling in from the Bahamas. I give her some, I give her some shout outs, some peeps on that. Oh yes, <laughs> you know 
It's your man, DJ Praise Machine. Yes. I'm in the booth right now with my boy. Who? No diggity. Who? Zero doubt. That's yeah. Right. No diggity, no doubt there, no doubt, DJ. Hey, what's up there, uh, my girl Red Head Walkie? I want to hear my horoscope. Well, yeah, you didn't. I guess you didn't hear me yell it to Pete W. P. Brooks. No. Well, he was on the chat room. He said, "Hey, I want to hear my horoscope. It's the same as Redhead's." <laughs> I, I wasn't listening. All right. Well, here it is. We'll do it again. All right. This is likely to be the day when you promised yourself you'd embark on carefully laid out plans. If you know each step you must take, there isn't any reason why you shouldn't succeed. All right, I'm not sure. <laughs> if at first you don't succeed, keep on sucking till you do succeed. That's what I say. Oh, yeah. Anyway, yeah, W.P. Brooks was on the chat room, and he's heard us so many times he knew yours was Pisces. Um, what is this about a tattoo? Yeah, we're going to do a... Uh, we're promoting a tattoo contest, and whoever w- wants to, uh, we think deserves it, gets the free. We're going to pay for the tattoo, but it has to be the Whoop logo. You know, the jackass. Can you put it anywhere you want? No, it has to be on the ass. No, that's mm-hmm. not right. <laughs> put it where it'll show. No, well, it'll show. <laughs> it'll show their ass a lot. It'll go around show their ass. Well, hell, Matador. Well, put it on Matador, then. He shows his ass every day. Well, it's not there today. Well, he's laid out the rest of the week. Of course. Yeah, well, you know. Well, I want to hear a song, and I don't know the name of it, really. Oh, Lord, well, give me a it's clue. That, it's that old song, Bud Ugly Woman with a Bad Drinking Problem. Oh, I want a Bud Ugly Slut. Right, that's the one. <laughs> All right, you going to dedicate it to anybody? <laughs> anybody wants to hear it. <laughs> what was that girl you used to blondie, or what was her name, uh... You used to call and y'all would go back and forth in the Georgia Blonde. The Georgia Blonde. No, I'd like to dedicate it to, to Hatchet Woman. Hatchet Woman. Yeah. <laughs> she lives in Birchwood. Hatchet Woman from Birchwood. Right. I wonder if uh, Big Ricky might really know her. I don't think so. Birchwood, the Hatchet Woman. All right, we'll get the, we'll get it on in just a minute then. All right. All right, bye. Redhead Wildcats. You want know to hear Bud Ugly Slut? You know who that is? That's Roger Allen Wade. A uh, buddy of mine from Chattanooga that's uh, claimed to fame is uh, his cousin is uh, Johnny Knoxville, of course, from uh, Knoxville, jackass fame, which, of course, is coincidentally uh, our logo, which coincidentally happens to be uh, the free um, the free uh, tattoo. If you want it, qualify and get it, we'll pay for your tattoo Right down the road here of the Whoop logo. But it has to be on your buttock. It has to be on your buttock. That's the claim to fame. We want to be able to get a picture of it and put it on our billboard and our Jonesatron and our website. And if you did it in a correct angle, it's okay. Kind of like they did on the billboard down at the AT&T field with uh, Champy's Chicken. A tattoo. A guy got Champy's Chicken tattooed. And right between the two words is a, a chicken, a fried chicken leg. <laughs> and... uh and you can see a little bit of a crack there on the left. So that's uh, kind of what we're trying to go after there, if you know what I mean. Uh, thought it was a mighty fine, mighty fine uh, piece of art there. Exaggerated. Even though I think it was a man. I can do without that. We'd prefer a woman to get their tattoo so we can have our picture made with her. And what else was I supposed to do? I guess we need to finish our sponsors. And Miss Norma called in. So I wanted to get her on live. If she goes all the trouble to spend her own personal time and money to even make sure to call in, even though she was about 30 minutes late, or only 15 or 20 minutes late, late really, from her normal Wednesday, she manages to call in at least. When my own sidekick, the star of the show, of course the funniest man in the world, 